I'd also like to welcome Dr. Shirley Nagai from the Center for East Meets West in Rehabilitation Sciences, the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, Hong Kong, discussing changes in cerebral oxygenation during Tai Chi and Quijong. Thank you for your kind introduction. Good afternoon. I'm delighted to share with you the work of our center to investigate the changes of cerebral oxygenation level during Tai Chi and Qigong. From the perspective of traditional Chinese medicine, health is maintained by the free flow of Qi, that is the internal energy within the body. And Tai Chi and Qigong are originated from ancient China and are now still the most popular type of exercise in China or even increasing its popularity worldwide. They emphasize on using the mind to control the flow of the qi within the body through different body movement. And they try to do this by maintaining the homeostasis within the body in order to lead to longevity of life. By definition, Tai Chi involves attention, imagery, body acquisition, and awareness. There are different school of thoughts, and the most common type is Yang style. For Qigong, it involves visualization, meditation, relaxation, and it also emphasizes on the deep breathing, which facilitated the flow of the qi into the diaphragm region, and with the body movement and qi circulation. And the most common type is the eight session brocade. There are different scholars that try to find out what are the effectiveness of Tai Chi and Qigong, and they find that the beneficial effects include the, um, tranquilizing the mind, reduction of the anxiety, lowering blood pressure, lowering the cardiovascular risk, or even modulation of the immune system. Near-infrared um, spectroscopy is an optical um, measurement to measure the physiological changes in the brain activities by measuring the concentration of the oxyhemoglobin, the oxyhemoglobin, as well as the cerebral blood flow. It is mainly used in the motor task and in the cognitive task to measure the brain activity level. As mentioned, Tai Chi and Qigong are mind-body controlled exercise. So, is there any difference in the brain activity level being induced by this two form of exercise? We've included um, 14 subjects. Eight of them were Tai Chi master and six of them were Qigong master who have experience of more than three years. During the measurement, we allow them to rest for a while and then to perform the exercise of either Tai Chi or Qigong for 10 minutes. And after that, we will also measure the post-exercise measurement. Throughout the whole exercise period, we measure the brain activity level by using the NIRS, the activity of the autonomic nervous system by using the heart rate variability using the nephrocard system. And we also measure the ventilatory parameters by using a portable unit, um, the K4B2. There were no significant differences in any of the demographic data of the two groups of subjects. When we compared the heart rate variability, we found that in the Tai Chi group, that is the blue line, there was not much change during the, um, during the whole exercise in terms of the heart rate variability. But surprisingly, for the Qigong group, we found that there was a significant increase in the sympathetic shift during the Qigong exercise. Regarding the level of the cerebral oxygenation level, we found that both Tai Chi group and the Qigong group, they show an increase in the um, oxyhemoglobin level and the total blood flow during the exercise. And the increase is sustained after exercise as well, or even a little bit decrease, but still the level is much higher than the baseline level. Surprisingly, we found that in the Tai Chi group, there was no difference in the level between left side and the right side increment. That means a symmetrical increase. But for the Qigong group, we found an asymmetrical increase. That is, the right side has a higher level of increment than the left side. For the highlight of this study, we found that both Tai Chi and Qigong showed an increase in the cerebral tissue oxygenation level during the exercise. And symmetrical increment was found in Tai Chi, but not in Qigong group. And there was a significant increase in the heart rate variability, that is the involvement of the sympathetic nervous system during the Qigong practice. So it led to several considerations. 
does qigong induce activity more predominantly in the right prefrontal area, or does the cerebral activity asymmetry be associated with the autonomic nervous system modulation? Actually, our results are quite um, echoed with the, data, uh, with the data conducted by um, Tonida et al. in 2004, who measured the NIRS um, by measuring the activity of a brain level during the mental task. They also found an increase in the right prefrontal area and with an increase in the sympathetic shift of the nervous system. So this leads to other question. Does it mean that Qi Gong and Tai Chi involve different kind of mental activity during the exercise and practice? Or what does it purely relate it to the different nature of the exercises? And our group is now continuing to do the study to answer all these questions. Thank you. <laughs>